Welcome back to Caribbean House Talk and my, our, seg our segment, Cooking with Trish. Today I'm going to give you my version of empanadas. So my children, you know, you often hear me say on the show that if my children like something, I'll try to find a way to make at least my version of it. So one of the things that they like is empanadas from the local Dominican uh, restaurant in my area. So what I did, I tried to figure out, okay, let me, um, you know, I try to come up with, a, with, a, with a, my own solution so that I don't have to spend a lot of money. Uh, I'm not frugal, but I just feel that I know what I'm putting into my stuff. So what I do, normally I make this with ground turkey um, instead of beef. Because you can make them with turkey, you can make them with chicken. Um, I went with chicken today because when I went to the supermarket to get the turkey, it looked brown. And I did not feel that healthy turkey would look brown. So I told the, the rest of the uh, supermarket, I'm not really liking that your, your thing is that color. So I picked the chicken because the chicken was nice and pink and fresh. Uh, so basically what I did, I... I kind of cook this in oil um, try to use some something healthy as healthy as you can and I put different seasoning and I put things based on what I like in my meats I put a little bit like maybe about two uh, let's say you get about a pound um, this is a smaller quantity but let's say you get about a pound of, of ground chicken or ground turkey you put maybe about two tablespoons of green seasoning I put um, some onion flakes maybe like two tablespoons as well um, I put some la some um, Larry season salt. I put um, chicken rub uh, because I use the chicken the chicken one um, ground chicken. I put chopped garlic, maybe about a, a, a one tablespoon. Um, you could put other things like soul food seasoning. You could put things like Mrs. Dash. It really depends on what you like, you know. And you cook it down with the ground chick with the ground chicken uh, or the ground turkey, and then you you steam vegetables mixed vegetables i personally like mixed vegetables in mine this is something i like so i mix it all together like so and now i'm going to make my empanadas i buy the skin sometimes i buy the ones this color sometimes i buy the one this color now it doesn't matter what color it is um actually i don't think there's one more healthy than the other i just try to mix them now what i'm going to do is Put, a, put it like a filling and sort of like think of it as from the Caribbean like you're making coconut tarts or something like that or jelly tarts or something like that. So I put the, the um, filling in and I use a fork and I press the end. Remember you used to help your mother make, make tarts that they would press the edge of it to kind of bring it together and usually they have a plastic in between the um each, between each each skin so you could use that to you know create this little design here fold it over and press it with the fork i'm going to do the other one and again once you put it in the idea is to flap it over and to again use your fork, kind of press the edge like so, press it on. Now you can cook this in a deep fryer or you can just fry it regularly. I do use my deep fryer because I can put about three or four of them at a time and it's very quick because this stuff is already cooked in terms of the, um, the, the turkey and the vegetables are already steamed. Um, so we're not, we're only talking about the, the dough. And once I, I put it in there, it's happened just about two minutes and we have nice golden crust um, empanadas. So this is basically how they look. And then you put them into your deep fryer or you fry them in a regular frying pan. Now, in the interest of time, and of course, the magic of television, we had some prepared earlier. And so here is the, the finished product. Okay, so I want somebody to come offset and help me to sample this. Um, this is a, uh, the finished product that we have. So we have Caroline Mitchell Davis, who is going to sample this with us. Um, help yourself to one. Grab a plate. A plate. Mrs. Harris. 
Mm-hmm. Looks really good. Come on, ladies. You want to come? Mm. Mm. Wait. Hold on. I'm going to bring for the other ladies. Delicious. It is. And there we have delicious golden empanadas at a fraction of what it will cost. You know what you put in it. Not everybody put the mixed vegetables and not everybody put the same spices that I put. I just basically go with the spices that I usually put on my meats. And that's it. Mm. It's very good. Well, thank you for joining us on this edition of Caribbean House Talk. As always. We look forward to having you and to bringing you a lot of informative um, information. We love to bring you fun and laughter and, of course, as, this, as we say, we aim to cover things from funny to curious to tearfully serious. See you on the next edition. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Today I'm going to make a quick dish which is called um, chicken alfredo. Uh, you know, I, I'm big on always getting the stuff that are easy. Because I, I believe in not um, making things that are too, let me get this, rid of this noise. I don't believe in doing anything that takes a lot of time. Because a lot of time, I mean I do things that take time, but a lot of times I come from work, I'm tired. You know, the kids need to eat. And my kids are finicky. They know what they like. They're going to eat what they like. They're not going to eat what they don't like. So what I have come to realize now is, you know, find the things that they like and... You could at least get two meals out of it because they won't eat anything past two meals. But this one, they'll eat it ten days in a row if they get a chance. Now, the new, what we have in this bowl is um, noodles. Um, we're going to be making chicken alfredo. Now, these are the noodles. Um, it's like about a one pound box and a half that's in this uh, container. So I just boil the noodles. Nothing added to it. Just boil it. And then I cut up about a pound of chicken breast. Cut it up in small chunks. Uh, and I season it, wash it, season it with you know green seasoning, um, onion, garlic, soul food seasoning, chicken rub. Um, I also do a little Larry seasoning. I might do some black pepper, whatever to your taste. So I add the chicken breast into the noodles. I also get about a small pack of um, mixed vegetables, and they're different type of mixed vegetables. But you know I I, I deviate sometimes. So basically, I just put that chicken breast in here and the, with the um, mixed vegetable. Um, I, I don't care about brands. Let me tell you now, right now. I don't care about brands. All I do is I try to find um, things that are uh, economical because I want to save a penny like the next person. And I just basically scoop out some chicken alfredo sauce. Um, I try to use ones that are low fat as much as possible but you know the boys they, they have their, their their taste buds are pretty sharp so you don't want to give them something that tastes kind of watered down so what I do um, I don't know if I can get away with using just two bottles today so I got three out because they usually complain if I don't put a lot of sauce and they don't say mommy it's too it's too it's too dry so I would get one of the regular classic one and I'll get like one of the um, let me actually this one is is a a garlic alfredo and then I'm going to do the reduced fat alfredo sauce so I think I won't do all three bottles normally if I do two full packs of the noodles I would do three uh, um, alfredo sauce but today I just did one and a half so I think I'm going to do most of it I'm going to mix it up so again you have about a box and a half and it's about this size okay and it doesn't matter again I don't care about brands um, and I have about a pound of chicken breast cut up and seasoned and and stir kind of stir fried um, I have a, a, a pack of about a one pound pack of mixed vegetables and about two and a half to three bottles of Alfredo sauce I also want to put a little bit of um, Larry's seasoning. Okay. Don't go too heavy in the seasoning. Just dash a little bit on there. 
They also like, my, my daughter taught me how to make this dish. She's going to be mad if I don't tell you. She taught me how to make this dish. She's big on Italian foods. I like Italian food, but she's more big, big on it. She's bigger on it than I do. Um, she used the six cheese Italian blend or sometimes five cheese. If you don't have that, you just get some um, mozzarella cheese and just put it in there. I frankly don't really care for the cheese part of it. I'm a strange person. I, I, I tend to um, eat pizza without the, 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 the cheese. People laugh at me and say, what is the point of eating pizza if you're not going to eat the cheese? I just love the dough and the sauce. So for me, you can put cheese if you don't, you're not a cheesy liking person. But you know, it defeats the purpose eating Italian foods if you don't have some cheese in there, right? So let me put a little bit more. The kids kind of like it. And, I, and again, I made this dish more for them. It's quick. It's tasty. Uh, they love it. I mix everything up with the Alfredo sauce, the chicken, the noodles, the mixed vegetables, the cheese. And I just really mix it up, really make it nice and saucy. And yeah, I think I don't have to use that extra half because it's nice and moist. Um, a lot of times with these things, you don't want to get too strict about anything. You just basically want to, you know, kind of follow your your eyes and your hands. Your hand, let your hands follow your eyes. So, you know, we Caribbean people, we're not big on... Um, measurements per se so I, get, I try to give some for the benefit of you know directing someone to make it who hasn't made it my daughter actually just taught me how to make this about six months ago i she always made it but i wasn't something i knew about so up until that point she was the one that was making it and the boys wanted it and i said you know what that seemed pretty easy tell me how to do it give me the recipe and let me do it because sometimes i just want something quick and tasty that they're going to eat um so um, that's chicken alfredo sauce. Again, about a, a box and a half of noodles. Um, and see how tasty that is. You could use the all white noodles or you could use the noodles that has different colors. I kind of mixed it. I have one with the multicolor noodles, green, the orange, etc. And I have one with just white. So I did a whole one of the mix with the multicolor noodles. And I did another one with um, just a, half half of one with just the white all right so i have a box and a half to two boxes if you I, I you know want to know the truth i the reason that i didn't use this extra one of alfredo sauce and i did just a box and a half as opposed to two boxes is that i wanted to do this like in the glass dish so you could really get to see the colors and so forth and the the, the dish here the bowl as you can see can't really hold the two so I kind of cut it down a little bit. I did a box and a half. But let's say you do like like two two boxes of noodles. Um, you do a pound of um, minced up chicken breast uh, seasoned. You do about three cup, uh, three bottles of chicken alfredo. And again, you can always do it based on, you know, you, you know if you want to watch your, your weight, let's say you might want to do the reduced fat one. Um, you like garlic, you might do the garlic. I put all three here, regular one, the reduced fat one, and um, the garlic one and again I'm not big on I'm not big on brands I just go by my pocketbook and if it tastes the same pretty much I buy it I'm not one big on brands so that ladies and gentlemen is chicken alfredo now I'm gonna have my son help me to sample this so Joseph you want to come over and we're gonna sample a chicken alfredo Tell me if mama hit this one out of the park. I don't want to eat all you all dinner, so there you go. Mmm. How did I do? Mm. Now when I first started making this, my daughter the kids will tell me and they're very honest they'll tell me yours is not as good as Raquel's I shortened my skills and um, work voila mmm alright 
So ladies and gentlemen, that's chicken alfredo. Um, and that's a dinner right there. You might want to have some, some salad with that if you want to. But you have everything here. You have mixed vegetables, you got meat, you know, chicken. And you got your noodles for your carbs. And you have a tasty sauce. And that's an easy dish, easy dinner. All right? All right, thank you. Hi, and welcome to Cooking with Trish. Uh, today I have a bunch of concoction out here, so I'm going to explain them all. I got a lot of feedback from our viewers who said to me, well, okay, you're cooking a lot of kind of American or Spanish type things. When are you going to do some real Caribbean food? So I decided to show you how to do something that is really Caribbean. Actually, it came from, I think it started in India, but the Indians, when they came down as indentured servants, took it into the Caribbean and we adapted it as part of our culture. It's roti, okay? Um, it's uh, roti, which is like a dish we make with curry. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about roti. It's, um, uh, you're going to see some pictures showing on the screen because we made a pot that you, I have in front of me already, but I'm going to explain to you how to do it. So basically I got a pot, I put some oil, just enough to cover the, um, the, pot, the bottom of the pot, and then I put some curry powder. Uh, probably about three to four tablespoonful, but, but here's the thing, it depends on how much you're making. I'm going to be out of view for a little bit and just get something so I can show you. Um, one second, I have this pack of chicken. This feels, about, this feels about 10 pounds to me, okay? And it's a chicken that we get in the supermarket around here that says chicken for stew and curry. It's perfect for stew and curry. It's all different parts of the chicken, cut up really small. And what I do, I take it and I clean up all of the... Um, fat and all of the skin and I wash it in vinegar I rinse it off and then I season it now this concoction here is my bag of tricks so what do I put on there I put my green seasoning I put um, soul food seasoning Larry seasoned salt um, there's another tropical thing here that I put I put minced onion minced garlic I put a little bit of Mrs. Dash sorry okay Mrs. Dash I put some some um, some um, chicken rub because I'm using I'm making chicken roti, ground pepper, uh, ground black pepper, and I and I season the meat with it and I cover it up, okay, um, and I let it sit for some hours in that seasoning. Now you can make roti with chicken, you can make vegetable roti, you can make roti with beef, you can make roti with goat, uh, you can make shrimp roti. So. Um, it depends on your, what, you, what, you, what you're feeling like or what, what's your favorite. I don't have much, uh, I love shrimp roti, but I eat chicken roti more often because it's a little more attainable for me um, when I come home and I want to fix something for the kids. So basically what I do, there's, a, there's two parts of the roti. There's the roti ingredients that goes inside of the skin. Okay, and if you look at it, you're going to see what you see in here is meat and, and potatoes. So I get some potatoes, some Irish potatoes and I cut them up small. It depends on how small you want it. There's no formula as to if it's going to be this small or that small. It's up to you. I like them kind of cut up in small pieces like, like this. Okay? Um, so, you know, people might want it bigger. It doesn't matter. So I cut that up. Uh, I got like two cans of um, chickpeas. Okay? I The five pound pack of, of, of um, chicken that's seasoned. And what I do, I throw some oil into the pan, I let it get hot, and then I put some curry to taste. When I eat curry, I like to taste my curry. That's just the type of person I am. If I'm going to eat something with coconut, I got to taste my coconut. I'm going to eat something with curry, I want to taste my curry. So I put for this about five tablespoons of curry because I like it really curry, curried up. And when it started to get brown, don't let it brown. But when it started getting brown, you then take the chicken mix, which should have been sitting around for some hours taking seasoning, um, and you put it into the, the warm oil with the curry brown, okay? Just to brown it. You don't burn it. You don't leave it on there long. Maybe like a minute, two at the most, but I would say about a minute. Brown the curry, put in the, 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 um, the, the chicken mixture, and then... You turn it up a couple of times because you want it to get that nice yellow, t yellow, yellow color, you know. And you can see I got quite a bit of it in here. Okay, so now you got you add to it. You after after the chicken is cooked a certain way, you add to it your 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 um 
potatoes that you cut up and your two can of chickpeas and you let it cook some more. Now the, the skin part of it, I don't have the time to make the skin. I remember years ago I had a special pot I would make the skin with. I don't have that time. What you can do is go to most Jamaican restaurants or Caribbean restaurants and some of them sell the skin, the roti skin. So it's, it looks like this, okay, the roti skin. It's folded up. It's actually a big thing. So you can open it. And if you're my children, you open it like this and then you take some of that and you, you put it in the middle of this and you wrap it back. You make a wrap and you eat it. I don't particularly like it that way. What I do, because this is a big thing here. So I take up part of it. I usually eat mine in two days. So I take part of mine off and I'm going to get a little aluminum foil. I'm going to wrap this up, the, the half of this up, and I'm going to have this tomorrow. Okay. I perform mine like what they call, I think they call it what, bus up shots, where you basically take pieces of the roti, you bust it up in pieces, okay, and then I just add this mixture in the same plate with it. Um, I think this is still a lot, so I'm going to add a little bit more to my lunch tomorrow. If I'm going to walk, I'll, I'll, I'll take some, some roti to walk, some of the roti skin, but I basically just bust it up like this, okay, I bust it up, and then I add to my plate my roti ingredients, my chicken, my chickpeas. I put the roti stuff into this, right? So now I have my, my bus up pieces of roti skin. I have my potato. I have my, um, my chickpeas. I love chickpeas. Um, and that's my dinner. No, like I said, the children, I have some more over here. So when they're ready, they'll take theirs and they'll open it out in their plate. They'll put some of this stuff in it and they'll wrap it back and they'll just eat it. Okay? I don't necessarily like it that way. I think it's too fussy. I like to just eat it like that. Okay, so that's how you make roti. So again, you get a pot with, just cover the bottom with oil, put curry to your taste, let it brown a little bit. Then you add chicken that's already cleaned, cut up, and seasoned to it and turn it up so that it takes that nice yellow color. And then once the chicken has cooked to a certain way, you get Irish potato and you cut them up in little chunks and you get like two cans of, of chickpeas and you add it to that chicken um, curry mixture and let it cook, continue to cook. And the amount of chicken I would say is about, that I did is about five pounds. You might want, you live alone or you have a small family, you might do one pound, two pounds. So you would, of course, adjust the amount of seasoning. And again, the seasoning that I put, and the people have different things, is green seasoning, minced onion, minced garlic, um, soul food seasoning, Larry seasoning, salt. Of course, there's curry that I put in the pot, but I don't put curry to my meat. I personally, when I did make it, brown the curry and add the chicken. I don't put it on the meat itself. Then you might have a little chicken rub, a little Mrs. Dash, and um, you make a tasty dish that's very simple, and there's not a big deal of of, of, you know stuff going on there it's just a quick kind of pushing things together as you can see I like things that are um, economical and I like things that are quick this chicken is like $5.99 $5.87 for five pound pack you do have to do a lot of cleaning if you want to do it healthy you want to pull off all that skin you want to pull out all the fat but it's it's a nice tasting chicken it's not the hormony tasting chicken like we, we see around here it's, it has more like a foulish it's not quite foul yard fowl kind of thing but it has like a taste it's like to me a cross between fowl and, ch and chicken all right so um when i say fowl i mean something that you that's running around in the yard chicken is that stuff that they grow just so that it could give us meat chicken uh, uh, meat so that's basically how you make caribbean roti so thank you for joining us and cooking with trish bye bye hi welcome to lick me pat and today I have a special thing set up for, to show you. I'm going to be making oven baked barbecue. Now, a lot of people they just have barbecue in the summer or you know some certain special time. I like my barbecue throughout the year whenever I feel like and my children happen to like barbecue chicken and mac and cheese. That's one of their favorite dish. So when I cook that, I could have that for like two or three things. Most things, they would only eat it twice, they won't eat it again. But if I have this all week, they'll eat it all week. They like my barbecue chicken. And I don't like the grill. 
I don't like to be in over a smoky hot fire. I just don't. So what I tend to do is do it in the oven. So I find a way to kind of make it look kind of um, grill, like it's, it's barbecued on the grill. And it's quite tasty if I must say so myself. So basically what I do, I'm going to shift around sometimes. It might be out of sight a little bit. I'm going to get um, the chicken that I use. Um, Is something that looks like this and it's it's bought it's chicken for that's ideal for stewing and currying it's the same chicken that I use in another segment when I did the um, roti chicken roti so that now I'm gonna use it for barbecue um, so it's ideal for barbecue for stewing for curry um, so basically I take this chicken and it, as you can see it has a lot of um, skin and fat and I trim off all of the fat all of the skin I pull them all off I soak it in vinegar water and then I wash it up really good and then I get my arsenal of seasoning I get my green seasoning I get my Larry season salt I get my Mrs. Dash I get my garlic I got I get my onions I get um, so food seasoning maybe chicken rub because it's chicken I just put I just rubbed it all up in there and then I cover it down with a plate like I, I seasoned this overnight and then I get a pan a baking pan and what I basically do is take the barbecue I put a little bit of beer in here maybe like a half a bottle of beer I mix it into barbecue sauce and I usually tend to get two different types of barbecue sauce uh, and they usually one is brown sugar and one is honey I kind of like the Swedish barbecue taste some people just like regular barbecue sauce I like it with a little sweet thing to it a little honey a little you know um, a little brown sugar so I take it like so make sure your hands are clean and I dip it into the barbecue sauce and you know, I mix it with the beer up in up in here and I basically just dip it in here and in the meantime your seasoning which is loaded with seasoning if you look at this it's all a lot of different seasoning um, it's nice and um, simmering in um, or swimming in seasoning. So I take all my chicken. I also sometimes the the this is not as big as this look. It's not not enough. So what I'll do, I'll get like extra chicken breast or something skinless um, chicken breast to put on there to kind of add to it so that I have extra. And I basically, you know, you could you could also um, grease the pan a little bit. You really should. This is a nonstick pan, but if you're not using nonstick, you might want to um, use the use a little bit of, of cooking oil, a little spam, or um, a little of uh, that little uh, spray that people use sometimes in their food. And basically, I'm just dipping it in here, and I hope to have some leave back because when after it bakes or sorting way, I usually take a brush and I. Uh, brush it over the top again. So I really want to get the barbecue sauce in here um, all over the chicken and sticking it all in here. Okay. Okay. Now I have some left over. I'm going to put this aside because I'm going to need this to brush on it later on. Out of view for a little bit. Okay, move these things away. Okay, um, basically what I do, I take a piece of aluminum foil, all right, and I cover it. Now, I'm going to put this back in the oven. Again, when you're in this kitchen, I'm, I move around quite a bit, so at times I'm going to be out of view. And I'm taping this myself so I don't have my camera posted here to follow me around. You know, I learned to be a jack of all trades. Okay. Now, in the interest of time and the magic of television, I have one prepared for you. Okay. Barbecue. And I have a mac and cheese. I'm going to talk about my mac and cheese in a minute. I'm going to stick this in the oven. And again, I have some of this left back. I have 
some of this left back and later on when that is cooked to a certain way I'm going to take some of this sauce and just brush it onto it and I'm going to remove the aluminum foil because what I do I cover it in an aluminum foil with all that barbecue sauce around it and I let it really like cook soft because I like my meat soft I don't want any meat I have to fight with that's just me so I do that and then when it's cooked I remove the aluminum for it. I take the rest of the barbecue sauce and I brush it onto it and then put it back and let it get brown. And it gets nice and brown like this. Okay. Now, let's talk about my macaroni, 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 macaroni or my um, mac and cheese. I did a recipe in, are we, um, I'm sorry. I did a recipe, I did a recipe in Lip Me Pot. Um, cooking with Trish um, and QXTV. So you can go to Lit My Pot and look for that cooking with Trish segment where I made mac and cheese, this very recipe. And so for tonight, my family and I, we have, we're going to have barbecue chicken, we're going to have mac and cheese, and this mac and cheese should last us about two days, if I'm lucky. And the, the one that I just put in the oven, that would be for tomorrow. So, I don't have to keep telling the boys, oh, leave some for tomorrow. I know they're going to demolish this tonight. And that is mac and cheese with lick my pot. And you will lick your pot if you taste this. Um, let me get a, a plate. Okay. I'm going to have a piece of this. I'm going to have the mac and cheese. And I love avocado with everything if I have a chance. I love avocado. So what I'm going to be doing is eating this with some avocado. The kids, they're not big on avocado. I am a real, uh, what we call a zabuka in St. Vincent and Grenadines. I don't know what other islands call it. But um, I love some people's appears. Some people say um, um, zabuka, some people say avocado. When we come to America, we, we start saying avocado. Okay? I'm going to cover this up. The boys will have this tonight. Keep it nice and warm. I'm going to cover my mac and cheese. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is dinner. Now, let me get rid of my gum. All right. Mmm. Mm hmm. Ah, this is indeed a good lick my pot dish. Mmm. get my mac and cheese recipe, go to Lit My Pot and QSTV, and I just gave you the um, open barbecue. Next thing I'm going to do on Lit My Pot, I'm going to give you the recipe for succulent oven-baked ribs, falling off of the bone ribs. I'll give, you the, I'll, I'll give you the recipe for that. And if you have recipes, or, or little cooking ideas that you want to give to us, you can contact us by writing or emailing us at contact us, C-O-N-T-A-C-T-U-S, at QXTV, which is C-U-E-X-T-V, dot com. You'll see that address on the screen below. And you can put in the title, Lick My Pot. So if you put Lick My Pot, we'll know these are recipes. We'll look at them. If we use it, we'll send you a little gift. That's an appreciation for giving us ideas. And we love sharing things. You know, I like to bring things to you that are, that are easy or different or, or it could be an everyday thing, but just something that I think, okay, this might be a good thing that people might want to know how to make it. You know, in the Caribbean, we have certain things that we make and other people are not quite sure how to make it. But we use other people's stuff. We use, other, we, when we went to St. Vincent, we didn't do lasagna, or when we went to Jamaica, we didn't do lasagna or Trinidad. 
we learn a lot of stuff when we come here because we are in the diaspora and we pick up a little bit of other cultures. And so um, it's okay for others to get a sense of how we make some of our dishes as well. All right, so see you next time on Lick My Pot. Okay, so welcome to this edition of Lick My Pot. Today on Lick My Pot, we're going to be making chicken quesadilla. Or I should say my family's version of chicken quesadilla. My kids love chicken quesadilla. Wherever restaurant they go, they always want some chicken quesadilla. So again, you know, as in keeping with my tradition, I try to find out how to make these things. And I'll be honest and say a lot of them are not Caribbean stuff or things that I know about. But I kind of adapt and I kind of get some idea and then play with it until they like it. I gotta be honest and say, this was my daughter's recipe and my son usually is the sous chef, my son Joseph. So today, earlier when I was making it, I messed up in terms of when I put the sauce on and so forth because I'd only made it one time before and he did the, the actually the putting together and I did the frying of it. So he told me, no, 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 mommy. So we had to do it over. So I'm going to start off with this um, tatia, flour tatia. You can get them in the supermarket. It doesn't matter what brand. You can get them in the supermarket about this size because you want to be able to wrap it. All right. And what I'm going to do next is to take some um, chunky salsa sauce, um, whatever brand you like. Again, we're not about brands here. You want to spread it out like so. All right, just like so. And once we're done with that, I have some chicken that I um, did before. I just dice up or slice up in small chunks um, pieces of chicken breast. And I seasoned it with my green seasoning. Of course, you don't have to have my green seasoning. I seasoned it with my garlic, minced garlic. And I am a lover of um, onion flakes because I don't like anything that makes me cry. So I don't, I know that the real onion is probably better and more flavorful, but I tend to stick with my minced onion. For you, you can do the regular onion if you want. And then I use things like a little Larry seasoned salt. I use a little, a little soul food seasoning, a little chicken rub. A um, little black pepper, and I wash my chicken in garlic. After I cut it up in small pieces, I wash it in, in um, no, sorry, I'm sorry, I wash it in, in, in vinegar. I wash it in vinegar, and um, then I mix all that seasoning up with the chicken, and I cover it down for a while, maybe a couple of hours. I'm gonna put it on the refrigerator, let it take the seasoning, and then I cook it. I put some olive oil in my frying pan, and then I just, I, 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 I just mix it up just just fry it up just cook it real till it's nice and tender because i like my stuff tender so that's what we have in this in this bowl so i'm going to put together one of this for you i'm going to put this here okay and then i'm going to get the, the mexican four cheese um some people might get fried cheese they might get other type of cheese and then I sprinkle some on here just a little you know a couple of pinch of um pinches of um the mexican four cheese then I'm going to wrap this. I'm going to do like this. And then I'm going to do like this. And then I'm going to do like this. See? Really nice and neat. That I'm going to fry in, um, in some olive oil. Okay? Um, I'm not sure if my oil is still hot. So I am going to see that my oil is nice and heated. And in the interest of, in the magic of television, and the inches of time, we have a whole batch of it prepared here for you. Okay, um, nice and tasty chicken quesadilla. Now I'm going to put this in the pot to kind of get this going, this other one going. Cause you know, I can't wait to cook this stuff and, and, and um, on camera for you guys, I have to prepare some before, all right? We do have a batch of it prepared for you, chicken quesadillas. And that's a quick meal. Again, some diced up chicken. You have some, some um, tortillas, flour tortillas. You have some four cheese. You got some salsa, chunky salsa sauce. And you don't have to have the chunky salsa sauce. And again, you guys know, I'm not one that's big on brands. So um, you can make, get the regular salsa, salsa sauce. Um, you can get whatever brand of tortillas you want and we just put it all together spreading that salsa sauce over the tortilla uh, adding the meat and then sprinkling with four cheese you wrap it you get some olive oil heating in the pot and as you can see it's already starting to fry um and i'm going to turn that over 
and we have a beautiful, tasty tortilla. Now, on Lit My Pot, we're going to be having, in one of our future episodes, Chef, uh, chef Chester. He is a really great chef. He cooks a lot of really delicious stuff. With me, I'm a, I'm a very good cook, but there's a difference between a cook and a chef. With, with a chef, he really is not just the taste, it's tasty, but he also go for aesthetic, aesthetics. rather. So you have to look really nice and be presented a certain way. With me, I'm just a mama cooking for my family. So these are the kids' dinner. Tonight they're going to be having some, some, um, some chicken quesadilla. And I don't have to take them to Applebee's or take them out to any kind of restaurant that's going to cost me arm and a leg. But every now and then it's okay I go out to the restaurants. But I come back home and I try to get ideas of the things they like. And I try to, to do the things they like. Like I'll make, you know, a lot of the stuff I, sh I showed you before, you're probably going to say, okay, she's Caribbean. Why isn't she... Um, doing more Caribbean type things. I do do my Caribbean type cooking, but I also have American children, and my American children um, demand some, some, um, you know, some American type food. And so, what I try to do to not break my pocket is to try to, you know, get those um, American children some food that they would eat in the restaurant. And I see my son over there salivating at the mouth, trying to get his mouth and one of these chicken quesadillas. Now I'm going to taste it. Okay, I'm going to take take. The chicken quesadilla and taste it. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I'm not saying it just because I made it. And I'm not going to take credit. But let me just say. This is very tasty. I don't want it to go on over here. So. I try to put a little bit of paper towel. I try to put a little bit of paper towel so they could drain some of the oil off, even though I do cook with a, with a healthy type of oil. Um, mm. Mm -mm -mm. This is very good. Very tasty. So we have for dinner at my house later on. Chicken quesadilla. And once again, because I get into my food and I don't even uh, focus, you get the four, Mexican four cheese, chunky salsa sauce, flour tortilla, minced um, chicken breast that's seasoned to be your favorite seasoning, and cooked in some olive oil. You lay the chunky salsa sauce on, add the chicken, sprinkle with some um, cheese, hold it, fry it, put it on some paper towel to get some of that oil off, and yum, yum, yum. Thank you for joining us in this edition of Lick My Pot. Mmm. Thank you. So we're over here with Chef Cece, or I call him Chef Chester, but that's a bit of a, t a tongue twister. All right, so he is uh, cooking for us today, and I'm um, going to party fires with some of his delectable cuisine. So you were saying before, when we broke away to you for break there, you had for us uh, barbecue short ribs. Jerk barbecue. Jerk. Ooh, yes. jerk. Oh, yes. jerk. Oh, okay. And um, asparagus and mashed potato, sweet, sweet potatoes. Potato, yeah. Sweet potato mash. Okay. Now, for those of you who uh, you probably see him on Facebook, you might even be following him already. Chef CC is a chef out here in the Long Island area. He is known for his really artistic approach towards cooking. Like, um, I, I always try to tell people there is a difference between being a chef and being a cook. I'm a good cook. I'm not a chef. The chef not just care about the, the just the, the taste right. the display of it the, the artistic arrangement of it yes. if you will so he's known for that on facebook he come up with every day we, we like okay what are we going to see today and there's always something that's really really um um delicious so we're going to be showing some of his some pictures of some of his different show different um um dishes that he does so this one is bar jerk, jerk barbecue short ribs yes. with um, mashed sweet potato and asparagus. Yes. And we're going to be fed with this later on? Yes. You brought enough, not just this plate? No, no, no. I got okay. more than enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> said, break out the bubbly. Break out the bubbly. <laughs> so, Chef, tell us a little bit about this dish and how you prepared it. All right. So we're going to start with the, the sweet potato mash. So pretty much you just peel off the yams. You boil them. And yams, by the way, for us in the Caribbean, is just the, the orange sweet potato. But in America, they say yams. Yes. So for you Caribbean people who are watching, yams are the same. Uh, this, uh, it's the same thing as the orange sweet potato that we get in the Caribbean. I just want to make that distinction. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what I have is so once you peel off the, you know, we peel off the skin, you boil them for about maybe 25, 30 minutes, depending on the size of the yam. Um, once that's done, you know, you mash them up, and then the secret to it to get the flavor is I put 
salted butter, which is melted, one stick of that. And then we do a little bit of nutmeg. Then I do some cinnamon. So that gives it the flavor that you're looking for because you know some of the sweet potato yam they kind of bland. So mm -hmm. then we have the sauteed asparagus. Pretty much that's just self-explanatory. I just use some minced garlic and some olive oil in the pan. And some people they like it al dente, you know, depending on how you know. What's al dente? That's chef not cooked. It's, it's, it's like, you know, asparagus, they come, how it comes, you know, you see it, like it has that nice green color. Mm -hmm. So you pretty much just cook it just so it's warm and it has like a little crunch to it. Like, mm -hmm. not too cooked. Like, this one is, I cook this down a little bit more just in case, you know, because some people don't like it like that. They mm -hmm. like their vegetables cooked down a little, you know, better. So, okay. with the short ribs down is, you know, basic, you know, I do my jerk seasoning in the jar, mm -hmm. you know. Um, then I use some regular seasoned salt, Larry's, mm -hmm. sass on, I use some garlic powder, some onion powder. Mm -hmm. I usually saute it down with some bell peppers and onions. Mm -hmm. And then you get, I mix the juices. So like when I bake it for about two and a half hours, mm -hmm. once you t once I take it out the oven, it's basically like it has its own like juice. Mm -hmm. So I take that juice and I mix it with the barbecue sauce because mm -hmm. it has that jerk flavor. So that way you get that extra kick of the jerk. Ooh. And I simmer it sometime on top of the stove top. Ooh. And then I just glaze it with the, you know, I just glaze the, the sauce on top of the ribs and then it, and, and what temperature do you recommend? Uh, the temperature, it depends on your time frame. Most of the time, you can put the temperature on 375. If you're in a hurry, you do 400. And then you still cook it for about two and a half hours because you want it full enough the bone. You want it nice and tender. Keep so you're covering it. Uh -huh. Yeah, you keep it covered. Most times, yeah. when you when you do the beginning of the cooking process, it's covered through the whole process. The only time I take it, I uncover it is when I broil it after I put the barbecue okay. sauce on it and everything like that because you want to broil it and get that, you know, that barbecue flavor and that barbecue really descend inside the meat. Do you believe on the idea that the lower the heat, the more tender the meat comes? If you cook it lower, it's just going to cook longer. So mm -hmm. even if you put it on 250 or 275, it's going to take longer. Mm -hmm. So like I said, you won't go wrong with two and a half hours tops, mm -hmm. 400, even, 400, three, okay. even 375. Okay. But 400 because sometimes depending on the cut of the meat. So I would just roughly say do 400. Mm. And, and so that's, oh my gosh, so that's what we have here today. Ooh, we got a full meal. Can I ask one, one other question? Yeah. So when you're cooking the meat, do you have any, do you put water, like a little water in a pan, or just the meat? No, cover? no, I just use, because sometimes when I season it, I have some little marinade that, I, that usually, okay. like when you create in the, the, the seasoning mixture, it has its own, you know, marinade. So I just leave mm -hmm. that. You could put like a little, like maybe half a cup of water in it, but it makes its own juice because once you cover it and then after it cook for about two hours, you're going to have a lot of juice. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. And these are beef ribs, correct? Yes. Okay. So we're going to talk about some of the other things that I've seen you online with some, some amazing dishes. Oh my God, you had a lobster dish one, one day this week. With something lobster, something lobster, stuffed lobster. Stuffed lobster, yes. Please. Oh, that was the stuffed lobster Ooh. mac and cheese. Yeah. So you do catering, and for those people who want to know how to get your food or how to um, order from you, I can't wait till the restaurant gets hooked up. Um, I'll be spending a lot of money dining there. But for those people who want to know how to order stuff from you, give them your phone number and your email address. Well, the phone number is 516-289-1417, and then my email is... Say that again slowly. Oh, it's on the screen number, below. My phone number is 516-289-1417, and then my email is walkerchester, the number 7, at gmail.com. So W-A-L-K-E-R-C-H-E-S-T-E-R. The number 7. The number 7, and at then gmail. at gmail.com. And you can see like that on the ask, screen below. I'd like to ask a question. Were you trained in the United States? No, I just trained. Yeah, I was trained. I trained myself. I just looked oh, up okay. stuff. I mean, I, I knew the basis of cooking. Then I just started really getting into it, like looking at cooking shows. So and you self-taught? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I give you a lot of credit because a lot of what you do, like what we see online, that you do, that would be something you think somebody came out of some mm -hmm. culinary, cul culinary uh, well, school. And, could and we put that in the pressure cooker? Yeah, you can. You can put this in the pressure cooker. You and still, you can still slow cook it slow. Some people do it high, but like if you want to, you know, like for instance, if you're going to church or something like that, you want to put it on, put it on low. By the time you come back, it'll be ready. Or most of the time when I do the other braised ribs, I, I do braised ribs and I put them in the pot on top of the stove top. And you can cook it down like that too, like people do oxtails. But with that, it's a whole nother season, like you do the oxtail season. And things like that. So yeah. did, you, did you start cooking for your family? Or yes, it started when you? I have children. Yes, yes. I started cooking for the family when I got married in 2005. So I wanted to kind of be a supporting husband. So, you know, let me oh, step up to nice. the plate and cook. Mm -hmm. So, you know, then once I got better at it, I don't know, for some reason it was like therapy. 
I'm just doing the kitchen. I, I have music going. I got the kids running around screaming, Daddy, mm -hmm. can I do this? So it was like, I kind of just gravitated toward it even more. And you, you offer catering services. Is it just in Long Island or no. you come anywhere? I go anywhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. I do brunches in the city in the summer. This is the season where we do brunches in the city. And like I said, anytime somebody wants me, I went to Atlanta not too long ago. Somebody had like a fundraiser for breast mm -hmm. cancer. So I'm going anywhere. We went anywhere. Mm -hmm. nice. Wonderful. Um, so, oh my gosh. So yeah. we're going to give some of the, we're going to show some of the pictures, some of the dishes and their names and so forth. Um, so we're going to, you're going to, and now let's tell the audience that we are looking to get you um, your own show on Lit My Pot. So we wanted to bring you on here and introduce you to the group. Um, you, you can also follow you on um, QX TV. Um, yes. We have a group on Facebook, and we can, you can we can you can follow us on that because you have a lot of your stuff. Um, and this is a hazard of filming outdoors, but we have to take some of it with the good. Um, so we, we we're gonna have you on Lit My Pot, and you're gonna be giving us some of those dishes that you're you're putting on Facebook. So yes, I can get to sample it because I'll be get you know my camera people taping. All right, so we are now sampling. Yeah, this is delicious. Oh my god. <laughs> oh wait, mm. I, I, I had them bring me oh. mm. I'm in heaven. Oh, oh cameraman is, is over there sal mm -hmm. salivating. He's mm. hungry. <laughs> mm. Mm. I got you covered. Oh my god. Mm. Okay. Okay. What's in your potato? Mm. Oh, he has a What's in the potatoes? Um, salted butter. Yes, salted butter. Nutmeg and cinnamon. Mm -hmm. No sugar? No. Brown sugar. That's a little bit. Oh, little, bit. Little, little brown sugar. Mm -hmm. Pinch. It's great. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. And that sugar is sweet. It's good. Right. Yeah, some people oh like God. it real sweet. Like my mother, she makes it real sweet. Like, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Cameraman is not even shooting anymore. No. He's just letting the camera run. in the car. <laughs> and he didn't. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you so much for stopping by Chester. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's going to be very successful. This is very good. We're going to be baking for you spicy island rum punch. And my helper today is Miss Harrison, Hyacin Harrison. So what I'm going to do is pour in this glass, in this bowl right here. I'm going to pour probably about two cups of orange juice. Um, with some lemon juice. I really would do more lemon juice than this, but I didn't pick up enough. Uh, grenadine syrup. Put probably about, no, put about a cup and a half. Some people put, I know I do, I put a little bit of um, nutmeg. I just like this, uh, especially when you let it sit for a little while. We have a rum from St. Vincent and the Grenadines called Sunset Rum. Very strong rum. And it's 84.5% alcohol. This thing can run a train. Let me tell you if, you, if you drink this, you cannot drink this raw. It will strip your mouth. Okay? So this is the kind of thing in the islands we have this saying that we say, this is going to make your chest grow hair. Even if you're a woman. Okay? So it's very strong stuff. So we're going to put about a cup of this in the punch. Some people like, some people don't, wouldn't use this because this is, specific to St. Vincent, but some people um, would use Bacardi. So I typically like to put both. So I will put some Bacardi and mix it all up. Okay. I'm going to taste and see because I like to taste my liquor. When I drink liquor, I like to taste it. Okay. A little bit more Bacardi. Okay. And that's what you have. Grenadine syrup, rum of your choice, or you can put a couple of different types of rum, orange juice, lemon juice, a little nutmeg. Some people might put a little cinnamon. I don't necessarily care for the cinnamon, but I love the nutmeg. And when this thing sits overnight, you will have a delicious little punch. Let me pass it around to to the ladies who are going to drink it. <laughs> they need ice. <laughs> now, what do you I don't want any, you know, I can't drink. Okay, I'll taste it. A 
delicious. Thank you. If you let this sit tomorrow with everything in it, and it gets a little bit what we call ripe, <laughs> that's when you want to taste how it, how it tastes. Mmm. That's it, folks. That's Caribbean rum punch. And, you know, people have different ways of putting it in. Like, for instance, you can put a little orange rind or things in it, whatever you want to spice it up with. That's it for this edition of Caribbean House Talk. Thank you for joining us, and see you next time. Bye-bye.